Hello, welcome. Going to be taking a look at Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. Now this was both a TV show and a toy line and I'm going to be talking about both of them and showing you some clips because this isn't like, you know, a cartoon in a toy line, which there were many of. This is a live action show, ran for one season, 22 episodes, and the toys interacted with it. The show is produced by Landmark Entertainment and the toys are made by Mattel. And basically you bought the toy, you watched the show, and at certain points in the show you could shoot at the screen and the screen would also shoot back at you. So it would only be a few minutes, like the characters would say something to indicate a shooting sequence was coming up. The episodes were 30 minutes, of course you also had commercials, so it's just a few minutes of the 30 minutes. And what you do, you just turn on your toy and wait and shoot. You get points, basically. You can't interact with the, or like, impact the show. You just score points for yourself or you get shot down if you lose all your points. You start with five and then you get a point for hitting things, lose a point for getting hit. And if you lose all your points, the toy basically stops working until you turn it off and on again. So I'm going to play a few clips throughout the video. Let me start with the opening of the show. Now the, the quality of the video and audio will change as I go to the clips because these are being taken off of VHS tapes which, you know, the show aired in 1987 so these are quite old now, 31 years. So the quality doesn't always hold up too well but let me play that right now. 2147. The legacy of the Metal Wars, when man fought machine and machines won. Biodreads, monstrous creations that hunt down human survivors and digitize them. Volcania, center of the Biodread Empire, stronghold and fortress of Lord Dread, feared ruler of this new order. But from the fires of the Metal Wars arose a new breed of warrior. Born and trained to bring down Lord Dread and his Bio Dread Empire. They were soldiers of the future. Mankind's last hope. Their leader, Captain Jonathan Pollard, master of the incredible power suits which transform each soldier into a one man attack force. Major Matthew Hawk Masterson, fighter in the sky. Lieutenant Michael Tank Ellis, ground and Vulcan. Sergeant Robert Scout Baker, espionage and communications. And Corporal Jennifer Pilot Chase, tactical systems expert. Together they form the most powerful fighting force in Earth's history. Their creed to protect all life. Their promise to end Lord Dredd's rule. Their name, Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. Alright, so as you can see, the storyline is a post-apocalyptic future where a team of heroes fight against a race of machines led by a cyborg. And that's pretty much it. Good guys versus bad guys. So let me talk a little bit more about the toys. This is the Battle Guide Rules booklet. I know it doesn't all fit in frame, but I'll have scans of this and photos of the toys on the blog. So there'll be a link for the, for that in the uh, video description. If you want to read all of this, it just gives you the rundown on how to play. So you can play against the TV, but you can also play against other toys. That's what, what they're showing here, which makes it kind of like a laser tag game. Because you're just doing, you know, the laser or the the light shoots shots. Because the light actually only, you only see the light when you're playing against other toys. For the TV mode, you turn that off so you don't have to see the light reflecting on the TV screen. This power on energizer is a little odd. It's, I mean, the way you hold it, but it works, I guess, just like the other toys. I don't own this. It's just what Captain Power stands on to power up. I don't know if they had that in the opening of the show, but I'll, you'll see later in one of the clips, the characters would go and stand on this platform and say power on, and then their armor would magically appear on them. So 
So, it's just more pictures of the toys and some of the rules. In the same time I'm uploading this video, I'm also going to upload two toy commercials and commercial for the TV show. That's just like a short commercial with a contest for the local TV station that I watched on. So that it, it's more or less a Connecticut commercial for Captain Power. All right, so this is one of the action figures, of course, Captain Power. All the packaging for the figures is like this, a reddish, yellowish, orange. And then, of course, the Captain Power name stands out quite a bit. And I don't know what the original MSRP is for the figures. One source said $299, but I do not believe that is correct. I have a Kmart price tag that says $437. Very odd price. I don't think that would be the exact MSRP. But I also don't think Kmart would mark up toys. Maybe they did, but I think more likely they discounted it a little bit. So I think $450, $449. That's what makes, eh, makes the most sense. So the Captain Power toy, the action figures are four inches tall. And they only come with one accessory. And they're really all interchangeable because they have closed hands. And then all the weapons have this same cylinder nub. So any character could hold the guns. And because I keep always comparing things to G.I. Joe, they it's quite different. Like G.I. Joe hands would be different and they'd have different grips on their guns, but it's not everyone could hold the same guns, but here they can. The other thing with Captain Power is the icon on his chest, he can go it goes right through a complete hole. So on that platform that was in the booklet, it lights him up. Now you could just stick a light behind him. Sorry, drop something there. So it's just to light up. I mean, not that you're going to hold a flashlight behind him, but it's just one of the features. So on the back of the packaging, another comparison to G.I. Joe, they have a file card. You, you know, it says to clip and save right here to cut. The only negative here is they put it on the top. So you're stuck with this hole because the action figures would be hung in the stores on the pegs. So they need that. I mean, they could have put it in the middle, but I guess then you would have had to cut twice. Of course, I didn't cut anything, which is really the way to go. And there's pictures of the other toys. Okay, now the other figure I have is the bad guy. Lord Dread. Oh, my packaging's ripped quite a bit more. And Lord Dread, I think, is a much more interesting character, at least for the toy. Although his head is much smaller than Captain Power, which looks funny. But he's got more going on since he's a cyborg and his weapon is cooler. And he has a removable cape, which is nice. Very nice cape, actually. So his toy weapon is called the Zap Blade. It's basically a sword and a gun, which reminds me quite a bit of the Star Wars Rebels, if you've seen that. Ezra has a a lightsaber with a gun which is really what this is except it's a sword not really a lightsaber all right so let me show you the power jet xt7 this is 14 inches long as the cockpit here which ejects I'll show you in a bit is put Captain Power inside and up here is the receiver in the gun portion that shoots the light beam one thing that I noticed on this booklet it's probably a prototype pictured here because these are reversed and the canopy is quite a bit different actually it's this is just a really grayish bland plastic with stickers on it. But the canopy here is a red plastic and these white outlines really don't look like stickers to me. So I think it's like two pieces of plastic together. Looks quite a bit nicer, but I'm sure they uh, save money by going this way. Part of the landing gear also looks 
different. I guess that's supposed to be a rocket launcher. It looks more Nero in the picture. Of course, there's a lot of stickers on this as well. The user said to put all these stickers on. Right on the bottom, we've got a speaker, what I think is a headphone port. I can't find any documentation that I have that tells you about what's on here. I plugged headphones in there, it fit, but I couldn't get any sound out of it, just some static. So it may just not work. It's powered by two AA batteries in the handle and a 9 volt battery back here. So you know, you just hold it like a toy gun, basically a light gun. And there's two switches, the on off and room TV, based on if you're shooting another toy or the television show. Turn it on. And I will fire it. There's also yeah, it beeps a lot. Button on the back. You know it blurs if I hold it up closer to the camera, but it's just a red button. When you're playing against the TV, it'll light up to signal you have a lock on your target. But you also press this button to hear how many points you have. So like I said it starts with five points. Not a big deal to count five. I mean obviously <laughs> easy to count any number really, but you can get up in a pretty high score and it'll be a kind of a pain to keep counting because what I'll show you later is a booklet that has a ranking chart that goes over 80 points. Now, yeah, you can count to 80, but do you want to count 80 beeps? Probably not, but there's no readout, so it's the only way to keep score. All right, let me turn off the vehicle. Now let me do the ejection. Sometimes it gets stuck. This cockpit, I think, has a piece of plastic broken off. I'm just going to rest it on here. Make sure it's down all the way. So it just launches them out. It'll do that automatically when you lose the game when you're playing against the TV or against another person. So you lose all your points in the vehicle. It'll like go, like make a grinding type noise, like, and he shoots out. I'll give you, um, let me do a slow motion replay from the side so you can get a better look at that. The jet also has a file card just like the action figures and much nicer because it was boxed and it, there was a Captain Power website that had an MSRP for this that seemed accurate, $32.99, which makes sense. They didn't have one for the action figure. I found that on some other toy site that I just didn't think was accurate. All right, so I'm going to play a clip from the TV show now, episode three, Final Stand. This clip, it highlights Tank, the character played by Sven. So it's not a largely violent clip, basically doesn't have any fighting in it. So I didn't want to put anything too graphic. I mean, the show was violent. I mean, it's silly violence, but it is violent in the sense that it's not a cartoon. So what it is is the characters discussing if Tank should fight. Some guy from his past shows up. I think he's a looter, but he's got humans held hostage to force Tank to fight him. But fight him with no weapons or armor. They're just going to have a fist fight because they're both from some kind of super soldier program and the bad guy thinks he's the better fighter so he wants to prove it so i'll show you that right now here's the deal i'll release the hostages before the bomb goes off on one condition that you come out and face me one on one without the armor think about it but not too long Negative, Tank. It's too dangerous. What if we tell him about the Biodread? He wouldn't believe us. Even if it did, it wouldn't matter. He's crazy. Captain, you've got to let me do it. And if a Biodread gets here and you're not in armor, you won't stand a chance. I know, but we're running out of time. He's right. I don't know what's going to hit first, the blast or a Biodread. But if we don't hurry, those people are finished. 
All right. Meanwhile, we'll try to find the hostages ourselves. But the second we do, we're coming to get you. You got it? Regeneration. 50% complete. Time remaining, one hour. Come on out, Michael. I'm waiting for you. Street rules. Street rules. Tank, what are the street rules? To the death. I thought that was a pretty cool clip, even if it doesn't have a lot of action. You get to see the characters, and of course, they have that gloom, kind of gloom and doom music going into commercial break, like he's going to fight to the death, but he really doesn't. <laughs> of course, the hero wins the fight, or more or less is about to win the fight, has the bad guy on the ground, but the uh, Biodred Bio shows up and interrupts the fight and eventually kills the bad guy, so he does die. Alright, so this is the last item. It's a VHS tape, Biodread Strike Mission Skill Level 2. They made these for skill levels 1, 2, and 3. So, the show itself was 22 episodes, and you can buy that on a DVD set today, all 22 episodes. But they didn't sell these, as far as I know, episodes on VHS, because this is not an episode from the show. These tapes were made separately just for something to play with with the toys and they're actually cartoons so there's a live action setup with the characters from the show but then it goes into a cartoon and it's not very long I believe it's about 16 17 minutes long so after the characters talk you had about 15 minutes of playtime it is constant action though unlike the show so you'll be shooting constantly you'll get much of a rest and it comes with a booklet gives you a rundown, gives you a score grid, so you can write down your scores for each of the three tapes. I only own this one. And here's the rankings where you, to get the highest rank you have to have 81 plus points. Like I was saying, you're gonna press that button, you're gonna have to count over 80 beeps if you want, if you do that good. But it's really the only way to do it. Alright, so I'm gonna play you the beginning of this tape and what you're going to get is the opening straight from the VHS tape, but then I'm going to transition into me playing it. And really the only way I could do this was to film, you know, the room, which is the basement, me standing in front of the television. Though you're really only going to see the, the ship and maybe my hand as I move around in front of the TV. But the quality, of course, will drop because I'm filming an old tube TV and the audio has to pick up television from a slight distance and me talking when I, I don't talk too much, but I don't know, I also don't last very long, which is fine because I don't want to make this too long. You'll, you'll get the gist. If you're familiar with light gun games, you'll understand how it works anyway. So that's going to be the end of the tape and just be prepared to have to maybe adjust the volume. So let me play that now. to begin level two training, Captain. Yes. Welcome, fellow survivor. You are now officially a member of the Soldiers of the Future, a resistance movement that's fighting to regain control of the Earth from Lord Dredd's evil machines. And we are late, so let's get moving. No time for training on this mission. This is the real thing. We've launched a three-person strike mission against Dredd forces. Northland territories, sub-zero temperature. Our target is a massive BioDread military complex. It's a dread stronghold and crawling with bio dreads. Reading indicates factories, lots of them. He must be building troopers. There's survivors up there. People the dread hasn't been able to get to yet. Jennifer and I'll be flying XT7s with you. You'll be designated as pilot one. I coordinate from here. But first, we've got to get ready for the mission. Prepare for power suit transformation. Ready? Ready. Run ignition programs in phase one, two, and three. 
three. How do our ships look, Tank? Fully operational. Eliminate launch base. Roger. Okay, locks are open. Begin mission. Redirect ion generators. 